Lost again! <laughs> I have to realize that there's this weird thing. I know I'm talking to people on the on the podcast, but I'm also talking to you directly. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything else I need to talk about before we get the show going. Did Jeff Garland show up? All right. <laughs> Could you turn down the Jew a little bit before you come out? I mean, you're not on stage yet, and all I heard through the wall was, I'm a Jew, I'm here. Let's do a couple emails. Those are always fun. Oh, by the way, I'm taping a pilot uh, presentation for Comedy Central next Thursday. Uh, it's nice that you're applauding presentation. But um, it's not even going to be on television. You people might be the only people that see it if you're coming. But um, it's the 28th at the Hudson Theater at 7 p.m. You can call the number that I don't have for reservations. It should be somewhere, shouldn't it? I should have that. I'm not a very professional. How are you doing? Are you okay? I, it's a little close to B to me. Because it's not, it's not funny there. It's still anger. It, does, <laughs> it does, doesn't dissipate to funny to three rows back. So I don't know what you're like emotionally, but just absorb it like many of the women in my life have. <laughs> I, um, because if you deflect it, I'll feel that, and then we'll get into the tension release thing. And I, I'm assuming that's your man right there, and I don't want to cause any discomfort. Like now, like now, <laughs> like now I'm causing discomfort. I love all the emails that you guys send me, but someone sent me one today. I got one today. She goes, you know what you should do, Mark, that I think you'd really enjoy is reread The Odyssey by Homer. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a noble undertaking, you know, but I'm like, that, where did that come from? You know, what Mark needs <laughs> is to reread Homer's Odyssey. Doesn't she know the heroic struggle I am dealing with every day? Like, and I was trying to think if I remembered any of the Odyssey outside of the fact that the dog recognizes him when he comes back and there's all those guys trying to fuck his wife. And, and then there's, uh, that, but the sirens, I remember the sirens where they had to tie him to the, 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 what do you call it, the mast of the ship as they drove down the island where all these sirens were, which are just, I guess, just women who can, can make noises and, and you have the overwhelming desire to fuck them to the point where you lose your mind. Apparently, the person that sent me this email does not know my daily struggle with you porn <laughs> Where I literally hear it the sirens on my computer every day. It's like mark waste 20 minutes with us Come come watch strangers fuck and make yourself feel bad for you <laughs> By the way the woman who was at my house didn't need to know that and she's here. I apologize. I didn't I didn't do it today Is that all I wanted to say? Let's read. You want to read an email? Those are fun. Uh, one in a series of what the fucks. Dear Mark, so my boyfriend and I were driving in Portland, Oregon, where we live. We're stopped at a red light, waiting to turn right, and here, there's a huge fucking truck in front of us. No blinker on and definitely not in the right turn lane. So my boyfriend sneaks around him to go right. Then the light turns green. All of a sudden, this massive truck decides to go right and almost smashes into us. We just keep going, unfazed. But then he has the audacity to honk at us a bunch of times like it was our fault and starts riding our ass. What the fuck? So, of course, I flip the douchebag off out of the window. Then he speeds around us, gets in front of us, stops his truck, blocking us from driving and almost forcing us to rear-end him. A little tiny man, uh, in, in parentheses, obviously with a Napoleon complex and little dick syndrome, <laughs> gets out and starts screaming at us. And we scream back that he didn't have a blinker on, and eventually he gets back in the truck. Just before he drives away, I notice a little unassuming bumper sticker. As I look closer, I realize that it is a smiley face with a Hitler mustache. What the fuck? Not only that, but on the other side, there was another one that said, it's a white thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't believe we, believe we almost got in a car wreck street fight with little Hitler. <laughs> I'm almost laughing because I cannot believe that this man exists and hasn't been stabbed yet. 
I really wanted to follow him, but I couldn't. And to this day, anytime we see a gigantic white truck, we look to see if it has the stickers and wait for the day we can key it and slash the tires. <laughs> the world is nuts. That's from Ginger. Yeah, that's, uh, that's always a good thing uh, to fight Nazis is keys <laughs> and slashing tires. It's always it's the first act of defense against Nazis. I have my key, and I will poke a hole in your tire. I don't know if any of you heard the episode we did with the guy that smoked salvia on the air. Anybody? All right. This is a guy that smoked salvia, and I, fa I found the poetry of it too fucking beautiful to not share. Dear Mark, last August I took salvia with my brother and roommate. It was a very hot Sunday afternoon. We had just come back from playing soccer in the park when we felt like tripping out a little. I understand. <laughs> We each grabbed a pipe that had been filled with salvia. First, my roommate smoked and did his thing. Then it was my turn. R.E.M.'s album, Out of Time, was playing, and the song was Me in Honey. About 10 seconds after I exhaled my smoke, my body started to split into tiny cubes. <laughs> That's fucking beautiful. <laughs> then the room started to fold inward to reveal outer space and the many layers of, 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 ex of existence. My consciousness then proceeded to jettison itself out of the back of my head. That's spectacular. I, I, wait, I feel that when I wake up. All right. So, okay, so wait, where am I? Oh, jettisoned out of the back of my head. Uh, uh, I was about three stories above my own body watching myself. I thought all of this was real. I actually thought that I had left this dimension and was being shown the true reality. That is an incredible feeling. Then I started moving backwards at incredible speeds into the cosmos. I was freaking out. I wanted to go back to life. I was moving too fast and my mind hurt. I want to go back, I yelled. Then a choir of normal sounding people <laughs> kept telling me that it was my time to go. I pleaded to go back. Then eventually I stopped moving backwards and hovered in space. Remember, to me this was all actually happening. I thought I was in the middle of space and then started moving forward at incredible speeds and re-entered my body only to get pulled out again. And then I had to struggle with all my strength to refill my body with the cubes of my existence. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I will never smoke salvia again. <laughs> That's too beautiful to me. He had to fill his body with the cubes of his existence. That's like, that should be a board game. Like something you play with the whole family. <laughs> it kind of is. Holidays. All right. <laughs> One more. Because I'm getting a lot of emails from uh, teenagers. Troubled teens, but not troubled in the way that teens are troubled that you see on TV or drug problems. Just people who are, these kids are like me. <laughs> hey, Mark, I'm a 15-year-old, and I've been going through some real bad shit. It's weird that people write to me as if I can help them somehow. <laughs> like, I would think that if you listen to my podcast, I, I would think that the first thing you think is like, I, I'm not going to ask this guy for help. Because clearly he's barely hanging on himself. But I think that's why they, they asked me, because I, and I'll write them all back. I wrote back with some woman with relationship device, uh, advice <laughs> the other day. I wrote her back. She had problems with a uh, with relationship, and I wrote her a big, long email, and that was a week ago, and I have not heard back. <laughs> hey, Mark, I'm a 15-year-old, and I've been going through some real bad shit. I found your podcast, and it's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> I had no clue that there were actual adults <laughs> other than George Carlin that could see things the way they are and not try to rationalize and BS. You're keeping me alive, man. <laughs> I've got a lot of what the fucks, but my most recent one was my older sister came to my house for Christmas. She and my mom always get into fights about her smoking all the time. I figure it's not worth fighting over, so one night she wanted to smoke in the 10 degree weather, LOL. She didn't get a coat, so I lent her mine. When she came back, my coat smelled like cigs, and the next morning my mom flipped all hell about me smoking. We tried to explain, but she didn't listen, and instead sent my sister home and me to a clinic for teen smokers. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, at the rate you're going, Justin, wait till she finds your crank. <laughs> I, um, no, I'm kidding. I, I hope it all worked out for you. Right now, let's, uh, let's bring out, do I want to do the what the fuck stories? We have some people that have some quick what the fucks, because I think we'll do it after we bring the funny guys out. You into that? Do we have some? A little applause from the people that might have a story? Come on, you guys. 
I know that 90% of you are improv performers of some kind <laughs> or aspiring to do something in this ridiculous town. None of you have a what the fuck story. All right, good. Well, hold on to it. I know who you are. I see you. Fuck the gay!